Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Let's all sing. Hey everybody, it's Alex Bennett. It is the Ramble and we go until uh, midnight Eastern Daylight Time. As always though, every now and then we lop our, run, lop our, we run over, we go over to the left coast of the United States of America and check in with an old friend. Ladies and gentlemen from the other coast of the United States and my hometown of San Francisco, it's time for the music of Larry Bubbles Brown. Oh, and his orchestra. <laughs> it's all girl orchestra. It's all girl orchestra. <laughs> who was the guy that had that in the 30s? Are you ready for this? I, you know, I have trouble remembering names. I'm terrible, <laughs> okay? But you throw something at me like that, and all of a sudden I say Phil Spitalny. <laughs> my, my dad used to talk about this guy. Phil Spitalny and his all girl orchestra featuring... <laughs> Evelyn and her magic violin. <laughs> I gotta. There must be videos of this. I gotta see what they. Uh, what they. Did. I would imagine if you went on YouTube, uh, they they've gotta have Phil Spitalny. There must be, yeah. But uh, it actually sounds like it was a great idea. <laughs> well, I mean, it was a great idea if they were all naked. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, the idea was uh, to begin with. For some reason, I'm. Not, I don't want to be sexist about this, but. A woman looks really silly playing a trombone. Yes. <laughs> you know, a guy looks okay playing a trombone or a tuba. You know. But Evelyn and her magic violin, of course, women play violins. Yes, it's a very feminine uh, instrument, as a matter mm -hmm. of fact. You know. But uh, though someone, I guess, felt that an all-girl orchestra, and they were good. You know, I mean, who says women can't play? And I yeah. think I think in some like it hot the Marilyn Monroe character, and her whole all girl orchestra was kind of based on that concept of Phil Spitalny. Oh, okay. Yeah. Why do I remember a name like Phil Spitalny, <laughs> and halfway through this interview, I'm going to forget your name? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Spitalny. Yeah. Spitalny will be in there for life. Yeah. Why do Why is that etched in my brain? As soon as you said all girl orchestra, I thought Phil Spitalny. And I'm going, <laughs> where did that name come from? Of all the names to be able to remember, you know? Like, I'm, I'm always, we're always sitting here, my wife and I on television, saying, isn't that the person who was in that thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, of course they were in that thing. They were in a lot of things. But who are they? And then I've always got to go to IMDb and I feel like an idiot because it's like some, like Brad Pitt. <laughs> you know, it's really simple. So, I remember Phil Spitalny. How's your memory doing? Well, your memory's pretty damn good. It always has been. For older stuff, but for, uh, uh, you know, as you get older, you just, uh, short-term memory is just shot. Do you have this problem? I watch this show every day called TMZ. And TMZ is like this, you know, it's like, like gossip. Okay, but it's Harvey, a, Harvey Levin. Harvey Levin, but it's a, it's a fun show. I mean, it's fun because they fight with each other, and it's it's just for some reason I find it totally acceptable to my intellect. Okay, mm -hmm. so I don't I really don't mind it, and uh, uh, but they 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 seem to always be talking about like rappers and so on, and. They name people and they say, and so and so had a problem today. And you go, who the fuck is that? Exactly. Now, is it me or is it that I'm old and I just don't follow this shit? Uh, uh, I don't know either. Yeah, we must be, we don't follow it. Or so. I don't care who rapper Bubba Zizi is or something like that, whatever the name might be. Yeah, the rap world is pretty uh, foreign to me. I... Well, I mean, it's not like I didn't care about rap. I mean, I always kind of liked rap because there was years ago on uh, in, in New York, I had on the air a group called The Last Poets. 
And basically what they were doing is what you now call rap. And this was all born, and they, when I had them on the show, they explained what they were doing was actually invented in prisons. Wow. Uh, and this would be things that people would do in prisons. And you go, oh, that's, that's pretty interesting. You know, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, and I loved it, it you know. Um, and it wasn't exactly rap as we know it today, but it was the it was the genesis of rap. And um, so I always remember that, and I always liked what they did. And when other people were doing stuff similar to it, I paid attention to it. So it wasn't like I, I'm that alien to rap, but it's just that today everybody's a fucking star. I know. You know, I mean. What I used to hate was when people would apply the word genius to anybody. You know, oh boy, he's a genius at that, or he's a genius at this, or he's a genius. He's a real genius. You know, and no, he's not a genius. He does what he does very well, but he's not a fucking genius. Einstein was a genius. Yeah. And how dare you minimize what Einstein did by saying that, you know, um, some comedian is a genius. Right. They, they say in comedy, genius is about C+. Plus, so. Yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, if you there's a show on CNN. You get cable, don't you? Uh, no, no. Oh, jeez. My sister does. <laughs> See, it's why I, I, I love you, Larry. You have completely disconnected from the world. Yes, and it feels wonderful. Yeah, and your act doesn't rely on on uh, on current events, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Timeless. <laughs> but on CNN, they had this show called The History of Comedy, and I brought. I've this, heard someone told me that's actually pretty good. I brought this up last night on the show, and they had a thing about dead comics. The whole episode was about comics who died. And some people who allowed their acts to die because they didn't want to keep doing them, like Steve Martin uh, and uh, Larry uh, David, people like that. But basically it was about dead people. And they, they mentioned Bill Hicks was the first image in the show. Wow. You know, uh, who we all can... That's a, that was a comedy genius, okay? And mm -hmm. uh, he died. He died at 32, pancreatic cancer. Terrible. Terrible. Just terrible. A loss, a major loss. Um, and they mention a lot of other people and so on. And then the whole documentary is over. And I'm thinking, where's Sam Kinison in this? Where's Lenny Bruce? They didn't mention Lenny Bruce. Uh, I and, overlook that. Yeah, Jeez. and then somebody brought up, there were a couple others that people brought up, called up and, and, and brought up that weren't in it as well. Uh, and, and and I'm trying to remember the other one that somebody brought up yesterday who died and wasn't brought up in the documentary. I'm going, how do you do a documentary of comedians who died and you don't even start off with Lenny Bruce? You just don't mention him at all. That's uh, pretty glaring. And Sam Kinison. Sam Kinison was huge. Oh, enormous. Yeah, but they ignored him. And yet they mentioned some other people like Greg Giraldo or whatever, who I quite frankly never heard. Uh, oh, Giraldo was good, but uh, yeah, but Kinison was just. Uh... Yeah, they showed they showed Schimmel for a quick second. Uh, uh, you know, they showed Schimmel, uh, and that was nice. Uh, but uh, you know, I mean, you're not going to mention people like George Burns and Jack Benny because they lived to an old age and then they died, mm -hmm. right? You know. Uh, you know, oh, oh my God, uh, uh, George Burns is dead. Let's put him in this documentary about dead people. Um, let's see here. They mentioned uh, they mentioned uh, Joan Rivers. Um, there was one other person that somebody mentioned last night. They did not bring up, and I went just abs. You know, so uh, I, I'm kind of turned off to that series because you can't do your homework that well and get two oh. major omissions. It's kind of It's kind of like every year they do that memoriam in memoriam at the Academy Awards and there's always people mm -hmm. they leave out. They always leave some major person out. Yeah, you know, oh, sorry, we left out Henry Fonda. You know, I mean, it's 
And you go, yeah, sure, you really fucked up on that one. But Jameson uh, died in April of '92. Yeah. Now you're not looking that up, are you? No, no. It's a, it's see, a, see, he's Rain Man, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I'm, I'm pretty, you, you can double check this, but I'm pretty. It was a, it was the first Friday of April of '92. Wow. Shoot and and it happened uh, as he was uh, driving to Vegas. Yeah, I think he was going to a gig outside Vegas, and he actually got a drunk driver cross a line and hit him. Yeah, and and the the big line that everybody had. Did you ever think Sam Kinison would die from drugs, but in somebody else's body? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean it's true. We all yeah. thought he'd be, you know, we'd hear about uh, Sam Kinison died. He had an overdose or a dose or what, you know. But no, the drugs were in somebody else's body. Uh, and, and uh, you know, in the case of Schimmel, I mentioned him last night. Uh, here's a guy who had cancer maybe twice, uh, w needed a liver transplant the last time I saw him. Uh, had a son, by the way, who died of cancer. Remember how he was spending his, uh, all his time on the road making enough money to pay the hospital bills? Yeah. yeah. And would take the kid on the road with him. And it was a boy. He died, finally died at about 11. Very tragic life. Parents were in concentration camps. I mean, he, if, if, if you want to say my life sucks, just compare it to Robert Schimmel's and you you got no problems, okay? And how does he die? His daughter's driving the car and plows into, I don't know, into a, 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 a lamppost or a tree or something like that and kills him. Yeah, I think it was a car that he bought for her. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I mean, um, that, that, that there was some very, that was a very strange death. And they also, one other thing they didn't do in this documentary, when people die, when you say, okay, so-and-so died, What's the next thing you say? You say, at the age of. Yeah. There was none of that. Nobody said at the age of. They never been. Bill Hicks, dead. Oh, yeah. Right? And they didn't even say what he died from. You know, you, it's only a quick sentence. He died of pancreatic cancer at 32. Yeah, you got to have the age. Yeah. Yeah. But... Uh, Geez, Hick, Hicks, I just, to this day, I miss Hicks, you know. He was brilliant. Yeah, he was brilliant. Good guy, too. He was brilliant. Just absolutely brilliant. Who's who, who's a comedian that died that you felt bad about? I felt real bad about Kinnison and uh, Robin. Mm -hmm. You said Robin's been dead for four years now. It just... Time slides by. But. Yeah, but it uh, went by pretty fast. But in that time, they named a tunnel after him and a park, <laughs> uh, a meadow in uh, in central in uh, Golden Gate Park. So, you know. Yes, and I think for you and I, we're gonna get a. Uh, <laughs> what will what will we have named after us? <laughs> An off ramp. <laughs> uh, me? Then not gonna name anything. They'll probably say, "Who was he?" You know. I mean, I'm a who was he is who I am, really. <laughs> you know, um, some people in New York remember me, and some people in San Francisco remember me, but because I came, uh, I was popular before syndication, I didn't have a national presence. So, you know, radio hosts, stars, were heroes in their own neighborhoods, so to speak. You know, like in San Francisco, um, people in the rest of the country never heard of Don Sherwood. But in, if you were from San Francisco, the biggest, the biggest radio personality probably in the country. Yeah, that's what I've heard. I've yeah. Never... But you didn't hear him because it, we were all kind of local, uh, I call us, you know, parking lot stars. You know, it, it, we... We have a local fame you, in San Francisco. You go to Sacramento, nobody knows who the fuck you are. You know, so you were a local big shot. Uh, and today, uh, you know, if you're a local big shot and you do real well, they just give you a syndicated show, so you're then on 50 radio stations. Hell, I'm doing this show for this friend of mine who has a show on 50 stations. He only does it on Sunday nights between 10 and 1 in the morning, okay? 
and he does it from his laundry room in his house. Really? Yes. And they got the they got the phone screener in Philadelphia and the and the engineer in Philadelphia. And he just sits there with this little box and starts talking into it and has a screen that says, "Oh, you have a call on line one or whatever." And and that's it. I mean, when I'm going to be doing the show and I'm going to be doing it out of CBS uh, here in New York, and they and he says it's going to be a dingy little studio. And and the, and and the producer is in uh, the screener is in uh, in Philadelphia, and so's the engineer. I'm not going to see anybody. <laughs> so totally isolated. That's why I wanted you to be on the show, but you can't do it because you got a gig that Worked night. That night beca- but, uh, because I'm, I'm going to be lonely. Well, you're going to be back in America's uh, mind. This will be great. No, I don't want to be. <laughs> you know, I mean, this is not. I don't want to host somebody else's show. I want to host my own show. You know what I'm well, saying? Maybe, maybe somebody will wake up and give you one. Nah, forget it. At my age, and, and one of the things I plan to do on this show is to actually announce what my age is. But I'm going to start off the show by saying I'm not going to tell you till the end of the show. And then I'm going to talk about the discrimination in aging that goes on in this country. Uh, yeah, which well, is the only, the only discrimination that's widely accepted. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, you're, you're, you're uh, 78. Uh, well, you can retire. What do you mean I can retire? I don't have enough money to retire. You kidding me? Bubs, you got enough money to retire? No, that's why I keep working. It's yeah, exactly. Of, showbiz generally doesn't have a good retirement plan. <laughs> My wife is 98 and she's still working. <laughs> you know, I, At McDonald's. <laughs> no, she's going to hate me for that. Because I revealed her true age. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Please. I'm kidding, folks. I don't want to ever go what the hell did you say about me but you know i mean it it it, it, it who who can who, you know this whole idea of retirement most of us are forced into retirement i was lucky i kept working until i was 73 most people can't find a job at 56 57 no you know and uh, if you went out for a job here's the one i don't like Here's the one that bothers me. If you went out for a job as a comedy writer, you wouldn't be able to get it. No, they were, God, I'm, this is 30 years ago. They said if you're over 35, you were not considered by TV as a writer. Yeah. So figure that one out. I thought that writing you did in a quiet little room all by yourself and nobody saw how old you were. Mm-hmm. And that you wrote a joke and it was either funny or it wasn't funny. Yeah, well, the networks, which were always run by morons, I think they had the feeling that if you were over 35, you were out of touch. I think it was 45, people. actually. Yeah. Yeah, but they the 35. Do you remember there was this one woman who went to the networks to propose a show, and they said, well, how old are you? And she said, because she looked it, I'm 18. I do. I don't remember. I do remember that story. Yeah. I'm trying to remember what the series was. If I said the series, everybody would know its name. And she, they said, you're 18 and you wrote like this. She said, yeah, you know, I just off the top of my head. Well, you're hired and we're, we're going to do this show. And they did the show and they made her the head of it and everything. She was the head writer and she wrote episodes for it and so on. And then they found out she was 32 and canceled the show. Mm-hmm. Why? She lied to us. What do you mean she lied to you? You were going to make a discriminative uh, decision based upon her age, so she told you she was 18 and you fell for it. Fuck you. Yeah. You know? And, no. and what was the, what was, do you remember the series? I can't remember. It was like Felicity or something like that. Some, maybe, what, was it Felicity? I don't know. I have to, I have to look it up. Uh, yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, she was she was like thirty or thirty two, and so she was eighteen. And as soon as they found out she was thirty two, I mean, here here would be my reaction if I was at the network. Oh, you're really thirty two. Cool. You really write well, and you write for a young audience. We love that. Right. Just keep it up. But no, they went. You lied to us. You're fired, and they canceled the series. And that's why TV died. <laughs> and I don't think she's gotten a job since. Okay. Wow. You know. So the talent has nothing to do with it. 
You know, it's, and ages has everything to do with it. Audiences are discriminate against age. You know, if you're too old and you get up on a stage and there's a young audience out there, they're just not going to laugh at you. If they're, yeah, at, if they're yeah. at a comedy show at all, because I don't know if young people go to comedy shows anymore. Yeah. It's mostly younger people. Think, I think the average age of a comedy club is 25. Really? Yeah, and there was, uh, there was uh, some consultants. They had a big meeting a couple of years ago for comedy clubs and bookers and producers, and the consultants said uh, the average age is, of patrons 25. If they walk in and see someone on stage, it's 50. They feel like they've made a mistake. Wow. Wow. See? Mm -hmm. And that should have nothing to do with it. Hey, no. are, is it funny or isn't it funny? Did it make me laugh or didn't it make me laugh? Uh, and I, so I, I just, you know, uh, so imagine me uh, at my age uh, trying to get a job in radio. You know, I walk in the door and the HR person will look at me like I'm uh, from outer space, like I'm a Martian. Oh, yeah. And uh, they won't say, well, we're not hiring you because of your age. They'll say, boy, you're a real pro. Like that. so <laughs> yes. That's what I was told by one guy. You're a real pro. Oh, well, that too, thank you. Yeah, we were listened to your show you did a, the other night for us, and boy, you're a pro. Well, good. What does that mean? I'm so old that I... You're not, <laughs> we're not going to use you. Uh, uh, what you're saying is I'm not getting the job, yeah. right? That's what you're saying. So, uh, you know, in a way, I just, I've given up. I mean, here, here, a friend of mine offers me a national show on 50 stations to do because he wants to take the night off, and I really don't want to do it, you know? And I don't want to do it because I just, I've given up. I've given up trying to do it. You know, in my mind, doing radio was a, uh, a thing of the past. Going into a studio and sitting down and doing a show was always something I loved doing, but I realized that that was never going to happen again. And I'm pretty much finding out that's never going to happen again anyway because they told me it's a dingy studio over at CBS, so I'm expecting I'm going to be doing my show out of a broom closet. <laughs> you know. So, I, you know, I, I, am, I, am I good? Can I still do it? Uh, you know something? I don't know. I really don't know uh, because I haven't done it in five years and that's the longest period I've ever gone without having a radio job. I think the longest I ever went was like six months. Um, actually, no, a little longer, a couple of years when I was between California and when I came to New York. And, uh, but, you know, um, for the most of my life, I've been in a padded room uh, talking into a big bulbous object, you know, and I haven't done that in five years. And I, you know, I even wonder if I can still drive. I, it's been a couple of years since I got behind the wheel of a car, and I'm wondering if I can still drive. I probably can. I probably get behind it's the wheel. It's probably like a bike. You don't forget. You know, I, I, about uh, ten minutes in, I will have everything down okay, and we're on our way. But I still. Uh, you know, it, it bothers me. I, I don't know whether I can drive anymore um, to any great extent. We were thinking about driving up to Vermont n next month, and then we decided we're going to not do that. We're going to take a plane. Uh, but I was going to drive around for a while, and I was a little worried. Can I? Do I still know how to drive? So maybe one of these weekends I'm going to rent a car, take out lots of insurance. Lots of insurance. <laughs> Total it. <laughs> and see if I can drive. Or, or whether, you know, my wife doesn't think she can anymore. Although she probably can. Again, you know, it's the fear of something you haven't done in a while. But uh, yeah. I don't, uh, I really don't understand it. Uh, are you, uh, how, how old are you now? You're uh, 65? I'm Medicare, yes. You're Medicare. Uh, and you're 65. And I still I drive every day do you, virtually. Do you get uh, Social Security yet? I took that early, yeah. Oh, you took it early, yeah. Yeah, I took it early, too. What the hell, you know? I mean, they're making a bet you're going to live. Yeah, you, could, uh, you wait till a, you wait too long and crook. Most you, people. Then you got to wait four years, and you got 
takes a while to make that up what you've lost. So. Most people don't make it to 65. Yeah, that's pretty scary. You know, so, I mean, uh, I, yeah, that's why I think Social Security should start at 55, because at 55, nobody's going to hire you anyway. Right. You know. But anyway, listen, hey, it's, it's always wonderful to talk to my good friend, Larry Bobbles Brown. It's great to talk to you, and I have no doubt that you're going to do great on this national thing, because, uh, I mean, you've been, uh, you've been doing your podcast it's, and everything, so... It, it's not like you've been sitting around not doing anything. Well, it's three hours, which is a long time. Yeah, it is a long time. time to fill. Yeah, but when you consider that the the, the commercial time involved, uh, it really comes out to 15 minutes. Yeah. So <laughs> I'll tell you quickly. Well, I'll tell you I'll tell you the story next week. Okay. Anyway, thank you, Bubbles. Thank Good you, talking Alex. to you. Bye-bye. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gabby, the Great American Broadcast Network. And yeah, here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are. I'm going to stick this in my ear right so I can hear with both ears. There we go. Okay, fine. Hi, how are you? I'm Alex Bennett, and we're here uh, until uh, midnight. And I guess I, I guess I should turn on the uh, the Skype and see if anybody wants to call. Uh, we're not going to hear from Phil tonight, obviously, because tomorrow morning uh, Phil uh, goes in for his uh, heart uh, procedure, shall we say? It's not really uh, an well. I, I guess anything's an operation whenever they have to go inside of you. Uh, but he's having a uh, uh, sticking a balloon up there and clearing out some gazorchness that he's got in his arteries. And uh, if they find that it's too blocked, they may have to do a uh, uh, a bypass. <laughs> but he won't know that till he wakes up and finds a zipper in his chest. So. You know, we're we're. I'm. I don't know about you, but I'm. I, I'm concerned about him, and I hope that he's okay, and that uh, he comes out of this just fine. So he won't be with us tonight because he's got to get some sleep. Because he's got to be at six o'clock in the morning. They're going to be operating on. I don't know if I want a doctor operating on me at six o'clock in the morning. Wait, a minute, let me turn on the. Uh, no wonder nobody's calling. Let me turn the Skype on here. Um, uh, uh, I, I don't know if I want somebody operating on me at that time of the morning, okay? Um, it's a little early. You know, I want the guy a wide awake, a couple of cups of coffee in him, uh, ready to rock and roll. But uh, anyway, how, how would you feel about this, Scott, if you were being operated on at uh, 6 o'clock in the morning? Or he says he has to be there at 6 o'clock, so I don't yeah. know if that's when the operation is. It is what it is. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but would you want to have somebody operating on you at that time of the morning? Well, they're probably rested unless they've been operating all night. I don't know. I mean, yeah. Would you rather it be later in the afternoon when they're dead tired? I don't know. Uh, well, I don't know. Here, here, here are a couple of variables. Um, the doctor uh, left home right after having a, f a fight with his wife. Okay. In the morning? Yeah. How, do, how would that affect him? Is he that professional that he doesn't take that argument with his wife to work with him? Uh, most huh? doctor wives probably don't argue that much because they're married to a doctor. Uh, oh, I see. Okay. So you're, 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 you're assuming yeah. that. See, here's, yeah. the, here's the thing I always wondered about. I, and I was told this by lawyers. That if you are uh, going in front of a judge to be sentenced, uh, you want to be sentenced. What did they say? Bef before, uh, after lunch. After lunch. After lunch. Yeah. After he's had his fill of beer and uh, yeah, and food and he, lunch, whatever. Yeah. yeah, and he's he, yeah, he's in a much better mood. But you don't want him like just before lunch because he's hungry and grouchy. Uh, Does that make uh, sense? It, that kind of makes sense. So I mean, that, wouldn't that make sense with a doctor who's operating well, on you? 
it's six in the morning. I mean, he's probably been up. He's, you know, I, I guess they're used to doing you know what, that. Like eight or nine or in the afternoon when he's happier. I guess they're used to doing it that time of the morning. I think they like to do their surgeries early and then do their rounds in the afternoon and they can take a take their lunch and then do their follow-ups, I yeah. think. I, let, I don't know. Let, I watch too much of Grey's, Grey's Anatomy, I guess. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, but, by the way, let me uh, let me say that because Phil is not going to be here, all right? And Jeff and Jeff is in Italy. I hope he wasn't in that uh, bridge crash. No, I man. hope he wasn't in Genoa, yeah. Jeez. I thought, oh my God, I know only one person in Italy now. <laughs> yeah, is 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 he is he is he fine? Uh, no, I'm yeah. sure Jeff is fine, but we don't have Jeff tonight, so we need uh, the rest of you to take up the slack, folks. You know, Rob once in a while. You know, I miss it. Yeah, Rob. Um, uh, I I wrote Rob, and he's just been he he he's just his life has kind of changed for him. He's kind of like. Doing other stuff. He's to begin with. He's a big baseball fan, so he's yeah. stuck with all the baseball games, and he's just tired of the news and says he feels he has nothing to contribute. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I can understand that, and hopefully he will at some point get an itch to give us a call, and we'll hear from him. And you know, yeah. uh, Albert could call in today. That'd be nice. Well, actually, Albert won't be able to call in today. Oh, okay. Uh, because of uh, w because he's going on he's going on vacation. Uh, are you? Oh, I see. Okay. What, what, oh, uh, John Perulis just joined us. Hold on a second. There's John. Yeah, he's uh, he he's going on vacation. Do you, do you know where he's going on vacation? I'd say uh... he's living in Florida now. So take a guess where he's going on vacation. Probably New York. Yeah. No. Disneyland. No, he. You got it right. New York. Where do you yeah. think he's staying? Probably at your place. That's right. <laughs> He'll be here for a week, starting tomorrow. So hopefully we can get him on the program here. So. Oh, that was the mystery guess, and I thought it was going to be like Durst or uh, Bobcat Goldthwait or Michael Pritchard. Well, it would never, Michael Pritchard it, it, it says would, to say hi to you. By the way, I ran into him. Both of us where lone wolves uh, bumped into each other at the movie theater, going to see one of the greatest films ever made, The Meg, with uh, Jason Statham and the Megalodon. You know, yeah. just fantastic. Very deep film. Well, don't ever count on Goldthwait being on this program, please. Uh, <laughs> right. Under no conditions. Uh, uh, that it, it will be a, a cold day in hell when <laughs> Bob comes on the, it might might it could always happen you know it could always happen but uh, uh, you know yeah somebody just wrote a list here of all the people that were not in that uh, that uh, show where they've talked about dead people well no Ray uh, they mentioned George Carlin but they did not mention Lenny Bruce Richard Pryor they didn't mention Andy Kaufman Andy Kaufman. And I don't think they mentioned Richard Pryor. They may I have. Know, I, I may have, I may have dozed shit. off or something, but they they certainly didn't mention Andy Kaufman. So anyway. Uh but um I thought George Carlin was spelt with a C, Ray Renati. Yes, it is. It's C A R L I N. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, So, you know, Ray's a nice guy. I don't care how he spells stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, he's not on is he walking maybe well, he'll, no he'll, he'll probably wind up calling you know it's just a matter yeah. of time um, but uh, the um, um, uh, so uh, you know I just hope that the doctors are in good shape tomorrow he, the only problem I have is that you know he's having it done at Kaiser and I don't know if you know about Kaiser, but as uh, Bubbles used to call it, he called it doctor-assisted suicide. <laughs> and uh, well, this is not a—it's not a joking matter. No, it's not a joking matter. But neither is Kaiser, where my father died. And uh, oh no, yeah. So, you know, I mean, I—I I just uh, you know. Uh, oh, here comes Steve. Uh, yeah. Oh, this is gonna gonna be a great night. Uh, 
anyway. Um, uh, walking in the wind. Huh? Uh, yeah. no. In the wind. Yeah, you're going to walk in the wind again for us tonight? Or out in uh, I will, uh, No, it's not very windy, and I'm going to mute. I'm going to get some Italian bread, but I'll mute when I eat and sit on the bench to the you know, cool breeze if there's a little How breeze. do you do all this when you're technically blind? Because I'm, I'm, I'm amazing. No, I, you know, I have, I'm, I'm highly partially sighted. Wait a minute. It, let, it, let me get this through. Are you considered legally blind? Yes, I am. But you're highly partially sighted? Right. That means, you know, I can get around. You know, you remember how, like, how, how Randy was when at, at TLJ? I, I don't remember how That's, Randy was. Well, that's very similar to with me. You know, I could read. I can't read regular print unless I have those. You know, those I just bottles. wanted a simple explanation. I didn't want a whole thesis. <laughs> okay, well, it's, you know, it, it is GabNet after all. Yeah, but we it's not thesis radio, you know. Right, I mean, right. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, yeah take, no, but I mean, my two. color is good. <laughs> it, uh, your color is good? Yeah, my I, that's I use that a lot. If there's something in the distance, oh, your color. You know, I thought you meant you didn't look sick. Your color is good. No, no, no. Mean, well, that that's you, good too. You, but, you, you, you can see. <laughs> no, I color. mean my color perception it, visually is very, very strong. Yeah, yeah. I'm like a bird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So well, bird's eye. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I guess. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you, can you watch porn? Yeah, I can oh. listen to it. <laughs> I can listen to it. I can watch it too. The only thing is, I have to look close. You know, like this phone I have is a you know it's it's a five point three screen. So if I hold it, you know, if I hold it like a foot well, away my, or my, something, my, or... my my friend and I'm trying to remember his full name, uh, Pat, Governor Patterson of the state of New York. Who got, oh I got yeah, a, yeah. I got to be a friend of. Is blind. He's technically blind. Yes, but we, but yes. we, we walked out of a restaurant with him, and he said, I'm going to walk home, and he just walked home. He didn't have a cane or anything. He, he oh, yeah. had a oh, certain... Like, well, yeah. He was it's very similar. Yeah. Uh, kind yeah. of partially sighted, but, uh, um, uh, you know, he was he, very good at it. And the only thing is that, like, when it, he came, <laughs> when it came time to pay the bill, he said, could you write in the tip? Because I can't see yeah. how, how much the money is. <laughs> Uh, so I think I I think we left a decent sized tip, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, he, no, but I he just, he was amazing when it came to that. I mean, I said, do you do you want us to go home with you? And he, oh no, no problem. He just and we uh, last thing we saw of him, he's walking off in the distance, you know. Uh, so you you can be you can be blind and not be blind, you know. Right. Yeah. You know. It's. I mean. Uh, you know, and if I'm in a familiar area, like right now, you know, uh, when I moved here about two years ago, I would walk in the street where I am now because on the sidewalk with tree, you know, with the, the the blocks are up, you know, I would trip sometimes. And now I know where everything is, and I lift my feet, and I'm not going to. You know, I don't. I don't need the cane. If I had a cane, again, we don't need a thesis would take, here. You know, we don't. Right. It would take me forever. You know, we're, with the things I have to carry. Yeah, it it just, and listen closely, well. folks. We're going to give a test later. Uh, <laughs> on yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, Alex, Alex. You're going to give a prize if you're going to have a quiz. Then you're going to give like a booby prize or something. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Scott. Alex, when, 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 I, when I was young in Iowa, we had the state blind school in my hometown. And they used to fast track some of the blind students into our high school to get them acclimated to, uh, you know, life outside of, uh, you know, the blind school. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had one guy that, uh, I mean, he had like, they were, he could see, he but he had these, like uh, uh, Steve is talking about, these Coke bottom glasses. And the guy was very smart. He was a computer wizard and whatnot, but he actually drove a car. And that just scared the hell out of him. I but was just going to say, what? I, I was going to say, you know, if I was in an area where there was no traffic, I could drive, I'd have to be really careful. I'm just waiting to get 
I want to get somebody or I'll get the flat on my bicycle fixed. And, and uh, at least in two weeks, I'll be back on the bike. And I love it. Yeah. No, I mean, don't, yeah. don't come near me. I, I, anyway, no, no, uh, I, I won't. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 in, uh, here in New York on 23rd Street, there was a, I believe it was a home for the blind. That's and right. I, yes, yeah. there yeah. was a home for the blind on 23rd Street. And I swear to you, and I'm not lying, in the window, they had a sign for... You know, people are trying to peddle stuff and whatever that said, no menus. At, okay. At a, at a home for the blind, no menus. You have to read menus. Do you get the joke? I mean, but it really... Yeah, we're all laughing. Right, this, right, yeah, yeah. Are you laughing on the inside or can you laugh on the outside for my benefit? <laughs> well, that, that's yeah. what I have to... You know, if I'm going to a place where they have the menu, you know, up on the board, on the, you know, lit up, they, you know, they're, they're, some of them are pretty big, but I can't read them. I just have to Braille? ask. You know. What about Braille menus? Braille, I, you know what, one of these, I know it a little bit. I never learned it, but I really want to because it's very useful. I'll ask you the same yeah, I, question I asked Stevie Wonder. How do you know when you're finished wiping your ass? I remember that. <laughs> That's funny. That's very bad. <laughs> That's an asshole. Oh, he loved it. He loved it. Stevie was very good about that. Hey, yeah. when yeah. when I first moved to San Francisco many moons ago, uh, there was a guy, a window guy, that used to drive around in a van. His name was Hunt, and you used to see him drive around all the time. But his sign on his truck read "Hunt the Blind Man Driving." <laughs> I like it. Hunt the blind man driving? <laughs> yeah, he sells blinds. Oh, hunt <laughs> the blind man driving. Or you could uh, look at it as you, you, you could hunt the person. You could hunt See, the I blind thought the joke man. was going to go somewhere about the misspelling of hunt. Yeah. <laughs> like, <huh>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's a, there's a uh, guy in San Francisco now who's on Facebook. Uh, and I bet he's, you. He's yeah, I mean, he's got uh, this uh, call out to anybody uh, who has photos in in film like eight millimeter film of San Francisco from the forties, the fifties, the sixties, seventies, eighties. So he, because San Francisco is changing so crazy now, you you wouldn't recognize it if you were hadn't visited it in a long time. Uh, you know, so I think that's kind of cool, just to have all these old memories that people are going to forget. And, yeah, it's funny. You know, I, 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 of course, shot more videotape than I care to know. Uh, and yet, I'm trying to think that, I, you know, all the time I lived in San Francisco, did I ever do any real videotaping of San Francisco? And I would have to say no. Yeah, me too. You know, yeah. I mean, I yeah. well, I go to Europe and I would videotape eight hours worth of come back with eight ten hours worth of videotape. I go to China, come back with another eight ten. San Francisco, if you asked me to pull out some footage of San Francisco, I'd have a pretty hard. I'd, I think on my last trip to San Francisco, I shot the most I ever shot of San Francisco. Hey, uh, I filmed uh, Wavy Gravy in videotape in a parade. He was in his clown suit. He was sitting on some big float, and he was that waving was, that side to that side. You his, know it to people. That, oh, wait a minute. That wasn't so, his clown suit. He used to. That's how he wore wore his. Well, clothes. yeah, yeah. He, he, you're right. So when he gets to me, he looks at the camera and he flips me the bird. You know, he's waving to everybody else, but when he gets to me, flips me the bird. So for you, so, and I got it on video. For you, he was flipping gravy. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, wavy, wavy gravy. I, I always had a certain. How could I put it? Well, you were at Woodstock. You must have met him or, or seen him. No, or I, I knew him. Yeah. You know. He, I, you know. I know him by the name Hugh Romney. I, you know. Yeah, Hugh Romney. Right. Forget yeah. about wavy gravy. It was always you, and uh, he. Uh, he was kind of, I don't know, I never could figure out whether I really thought he was interesting or not. <laughs> you, you, you know? Um, Wavy, Wavy Gravy, for people who don't know who Wavy Gravy was, because, you know, people on this show bring up references that anybody under the age of 50 never heard of. Um, 
<laughs> Wavy Gravy was the one of uh, the head, I would say, was the head honcho with a group of people called the Hog Farm. Yeah. And the Hog, hog Farm were kind of went around and, and did, you know, he, he was always dressed up as a clown. And uh, they would do all kinds of little street theater and things like that and, you know, show up at various events like they were at Woodstock, as an example. Um, but um, uh, he just, one, one time I remember the, my, my f most interesting time with Wavy was that Paul Krasner and I were asked if we would go do the uh, not the uh, Jerry Lewis telethon, but the cerebral palsy telethon. Uh, and uh, so we both agreed to do it. I don't know why. He decided he wanted to do it because he wanted to write an article on doing a telethon. And, <laughs> and I decided I would do it because, hell, you know, how can I say no to kids who are gimpy, you know? So, so I... Uh, I, I go to this thing, and to begin with, I get really pissed off because there's this woman who gives us a lecture before we go on the air, saying uh, we don't uh, we don't refer to cerebral palsy as uh, to the people who have it as being handicapped. We refer to them as handicapable, uh, and I thought that was the most pretentious piece of crap I ever heard in my life you know Dude, if I well, if I were say? handicapped and you called me handicapable I'd fucking hit you you know <laughs> I mean it's just well don't don't condescend to me by calling me handicapable am I right Steve I can't hear me hey fellas hey but that sounds yes, like yes. Uh, you, you're, you're right as, what it, it, you're it, right yeah and yeah I'd be normal it, it, I, it, I could never understand even the handicap. I don't even know. It sounds like a horse race or something. Yeah, but at least a handicapable just sounds like it's pretentious. Oh, it's so and, condescending. And it's condescending, yeah. 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 So anyway, uh, so now we go on the air, and I've got a script to read. It's on a teleprompter. And I say, well, folks, you want to give us cerebral palsy, blah, 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 you know. Uh, the people in back of me are answering the phones. And these people, ladies and gentlemen, are the face of cerebral palsy. And as I say that, sitting right behind me, over my shoulder, is Hugh Romney in clown face. And, I, and, I, and as I say, and these, this, this is the face of, 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 uh, of cerebral palsy. I point to Hugh Romney. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Yeah. Touche. Yeah. That was, it was it was it was it was one of my greatest moments in show business. Yeah. yeah. That's the last time I ever did a uh, I I did uh, the only one I would ever do I believe it or not I used to do the muscular dystrophy telethon. Uh with the Jerry Lewis telethon. And the reason I would do it that was in spite of Jerry Lewis. Uh, it was the only only organization where I found that something like ninety percent of the funds that were raised actually went to research. Mm -hmm. Everything else, like cerebral palsy, I stopped doing that the minute I found out cerebral palsy. It was like forty five percent. Only forty five percent went to research. The rest went to paying high paid executives to collect money from you. Yeah. And and. But so I always after that I always checked out how much you know people were were charging you know how much people uh, what kind of percentage was going back to the actual uh, right. solving of the problem at hand. By the Alex, way, did you ever ha hang out with the diggers? You know Peter Coyote's uh, bunch. I no, I never. I you know I think I bumped into them on one occasion, but I never. Uh, I never. It, yeah, for those of you who don't know, the diggers were a, a common fixture and hate during the summer of love and that time of the hippie uh, fame. And they used to drive around in a big pickup truck or a flatbed, you know, throwing out food and money. They used to throw, you know, fives and ones all over the street and people would go scrambling. And uh, famous actor and narrator Peter, Co Peter Coyote used to be a digger. That's one of the things he did. That's why his name is Peter Coyote. That's not his real name. That was, that was his, yeah. that was his yeah, yeah. digger name. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. So anyway, hey, listen, by the way, folks, you know, you can call. It would be nice if you joined us. Join the citizens panel. Uh, you know, don't put all the don't put all the weight on the backs of just two people and Steve. <laughs> You know. Hey, then as a consolation prize, you'll get this. It's a worm blower. Check that out. Magic worm blower. What, what this device, it's still in the package, so I could get a lot of money for it someday. What this does is it's for fishermen. That you, t you take the little red cap off of this thing. It's just filled with air. And yeah. you stick it in a worm, and you blow the worm up and go fishing with an enhanced worm and that, that's supposed to improve your fishing at, uh, production so that's what you get a surprise so let me get this straight you you're into blowing worms no i bought this at gus's on balboa street did you ever stop at shop at gus's uh, alex you must have no you're right at the end of, uh, of Bob, balboa street near playland well that's where i got this thing from gus he sells all kinds of weird fishing par paraphernalia. Guy's been in there since the 1940s. And you know what? That store is still open. I think his daughter runs it now. It's really amazing. Really? So that's where I got my so worm So let's see. Blower. Tonight we have the worm blower. And yet last night we had colon blow. <laughs> hey, let me ask you. I don't remember from my um, um, biology or whatever, but insect or, or reptile, you know, like worms, do they have... Um, they must have some kind of reproductive organs, right? Yeah. I, don't I think know. I think worms are her hermaphroditic. They're they they can be both male and female. Yeah, right. So right. what do they do? They fuck themselves. Is this what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you tell them to go fuck themselves, they wouldn't get affected. All right. I'm like a good idea. <laughs> I never, never thought of that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's a cool one. So I've got another penis thing if you want to take a look at it here. Another I've penis a, thing? Yeah. What, what, well, you know, blowing reference. Oh. Yeah. What, what, what is it you're holding up now? Uh, this is my wife's favorite thing. It's it's a rhinoceros squirt gun. You, uh, <laughs> you press this thing and uh, the water comes out of the nozzle. Out of the, out of the mouth? Out of the front of the... Yeah. Right there. See that? Oh, look, Tommy Amaguchi. Just as you come on, you see a rhinoceros with a triggered penis there, or whatever that is. Exciting. That's a water gun? <laughs> yeah. I literally yeah. have an, I, I have an elephant gun. I really do. It's a, it's a little, um, my brother had it. It's a little handheld water pistol. Yeah. <laughs> really? The water comes out the trunk. Well, this is here, the water comes out the, what, the mouth? Uh, area yeah. Thing? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, it's very Sam, nice. There, you could fill this with Jack Daniels or water, <laughs> whatever, you know. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I, if you were, uh, uh, let me ask uh, uh, Tom this. Tom's a father, right, Tom? Yes. 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 And and uh, if, if did you ever let your kids play with not guns but water guns? Oh, water pistols? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. they've had. Water yeah, I, because some people are just like, no, I wouldn't have my child, you know, use water <laughs> pistols because it's uh, yeah. not politically correct, and you're, you're telling them how to use. That guns. is so ridiculous. I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, really, come on, you know, political correctness, correctness, run amok. You know? Yeah, yeah. I was just wondering yeah. about that because uh, I would, uh, I'd actually, I, you know, um, hello, Keenan. Hi, Alex. Hi, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Keenan. Uh, Keenan, panel, panel, Keenan. <laughs> uh, uh, we have uh, John Perulis and we have Steve, who's the telephone, the picture of the telephone. We have Scott, he's down in Texas. And we have Tom Yamaguchi, who is uh, a long time follower of my programs and is i'm sure his brain has turned to mush by now so so i just wanted to uh, show you you know i've, I've worn this, this shirt on the program before my general magic shirt right uh you know i discovered there's actually a documentary made of that company that's out they're looking for a distributor 
but it's a it's a, a story. It's the the general uh, the uh, general magic story. Now, general magic, and let me see if I've got this if I remember this correctly, because a lot of these uh, 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 tech companies came and went pretty fast. General Magic actually had some hardware, didn't they? And it was a little slate. It was like well, it was like first, a, it was well, like a, like an iPad, you know, but a small version of that. Well, the first handheld computers that connected uh, to the internet. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, and I and had one. You 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 actually uh, uh, sold or gave demo a demo here in in Berkeley at the Horth Access store. Yeah. Where, where this is how I got the T-shirt. I got this T-shirt right. from you. Right. Oh, really? Yes. See, I don't even have that T-shirt. Why don't I have that T-shirt? <laughs> you gave it to me. <laughs> well, well, there were more than one. Yeah, you yeah. gave a bunch of them. I don't know how long that company lasted, but it had to be about five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's that's, that's about right. Yeah. I've never heard of them. Never heard I of them. I never have. I, no, I don't think, you would. I don't think yeah. you would have because I advertised them. So, you know, no, it's probably why you never heard of them. Um, was it before Apple? Uh, no, Apple. Well, it was before Apple did a, an iPad, yeah. I, I, Apple was around, you know, Apple was around from the very beginning with computers. Yeah. Actually, uh, while this company's existence, that's when they brought out the Newton. Ah, okay. Oh, okay. Another yeah. wonderful idea. Did you, hey, when, did, um, wait a minute. They when, gave me, wait, hold on a second. They gave me a Newton. Ahead. They gave me a Newton. I was doing this show, uh, Log On TV. So they gave me this Newton to play with Apple. Here, go have fun with it. Do a, do a piece on it, right? Well, the piece I wound up doing was, hey, no matter what you write into this, it never comes back and says it right. <laughs> yeah, because, no matter, because the idea was you should be able to write on this thing and then if I write uh, hello John Perulis it should then turn it into okay. into print hello John Perulis and it would come out yeah, yeah. That, ha that happened to me they had a they had a display remember the old computer wear stores yeah they had a, a display in the Berkeley store and I and they had like the little stylus there and I went up with my left hand and started trying to write, and it just turned in all kinds of weird symbols I'd never seen before in my life. That was that, <laughs> not very good advertising. Well, for I mean, you know, it was an idea that the concept of what it was supposed to be was a great idea, but mm -hmm. the follow through certainly wasn't. And if you think about it, to this day, we really don't have a handwriting recognition program for a tablet. They never built that into the iPad or whatever. You just type it, right? But uh, it would be nice if you could write it, and then it turned, you know, it turned your cursive into into print. But everybody's cursive is different. Oh sure. You know, yeah. I think writing handwriting is like a, like a fingerprint. You know, ever nobody writes exactly the same way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when I had a, a Palm Pilot, uh, you could write on it, but you had to write. Uh, letters in a, spe a specific way for them to, to translate Right, and that was a pain in the ass because you had to learn the alphabet all over again. Yeah. You know, well, I, I was able to do it. But. You know, the A was like a tri upwards down triangle yes. thing yeah. and so on. But mm -hmm. I remember that. I remember that very well. And uh, the Palm Pilot actually is kind of what put the Newton out of business because everybody mm -hmm. kind of fell in love with the Palm Pilot. That right. Was, that was until... The iPhone came along, at which point nobody gave a shit about the Palm Pilot, <laughs> you know. And uh, I guess they went out of business a short time after that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, wow. <clears throat> computer question, the easy one, because uh, you always followed computer. Well, yeah. when did Apple actually start? When did they, I mean, they were there almost like from the beginning of computers. So, well, they, IBM, they weren't before IBM, though, right? No, no, oh, they, no, they, no, they, no. They started 76. Yeah. Okay, right. that's about, that's all. Was, did they, was, were they the ones that had that, like, that, put that little, like, that handheld little football game and all that thing people used to play? Was that no. Apple? No, no, no. No. Apple was the Apple computer. There was the Apple II, which is the first Apple I ever saw. 
Oh, yeah, I remember. Al yeah, Goldstein yeah. owned one, and I played with it a little bit and couldn't figure out what it was good for and finally <laughs> went back to playing with this Atari, which, by the way, was a very good computer on its own, the Atari 800. Uh, oh, and, yeah. And, yeah. and uh, But, you know, basically I used them to play games. Fuck it, you know. They weren't that good as computers. They only became good at computers... <clears throat> The, the minute I realized that a computer could be useful was that I had an Atari 800, which only had 400 <laughs> characters across the screen. But I had a program somebody gave me. It was kind of a, it was a bootleg called uh, VisiCalc. Mm -hmm. And I put it oh in, and, I, and it wow. was like I saw that it was uh, like a spreadsheet. So I called my accountant, and I said, Gary, you got to get over here and see this thing. Tell me what it is. And he went over and he saw. He said, "Well, it's a, it's a it's kind of looks like a spreadsheet." He said, "Let me just put some numbers in there." And he put in like four hundred, and then the next line four hundred, and then created a total, and it totaled it up. And he said, "This is amazing. Where do we get these?" You know, to me, <laughs> we went out and we got. Well, actually, what we went out and got were <clears throat> IBM computers at the time, <clears throat> because I still remember it yeah. changed his whole life. Because up until then, he was going blind doing spreadsheets. You know, and having to write in and use the calculator to add up the rows of numbers and everything. And now here's somebody who just, bloop, there were the numbers that were all added up. And, yeah. uh, I still, yes, I was uh, just thinking, uh, what I was what? just going to say, I, I just remember, uh, uh, I thought it was so funny when I heard this. It's not because it's mean, but it is about President Reagan. So, you know, well, will you finish, which, uh, we get to what you're going to yes. say? Yes. <laughs> What is the difference at the time, this was 30 years ago, what was the difference between President Reagan and an IBM Selector 200 typewriter? <laughs> I, I have no idea. The IBM has a colon and a memory. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, uh, 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 Tom Yamaguchi. <laughs> Yes, I was just going to make a recommendation to Steve. Uh, there's a great book, and I've recommended it to other people. Everybody loves it, and I've recommended it to. It's called Fire in the Valley, and it's basically the the start of the of the of the you know Silicon Valley with Apple Computer and Atari. Oh, and all cool! And IBM, and well, I mean IBM, but uh, Microsoft. So I would suggest that there's also a great old PBS series. Um, about the homebrew computer pl club uh, called uh, the Triumph of the Nerds. You remember that one, Alex? Yeah, 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 absolutely. That's a very good. That's a very good series. Well, I as well. also I also remember Fire in the Valley too. I mean, it, yeah. it, 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 it's quite an interesting history. And when you think about it, <clears throat> what's happened in the small amount of time? I mean, now that I look back on it, I think of it as a small amount of time. I suppose to a kid who's 15 years old, it was long long time ago but this stuff i mean the development how we've gone from you know uh the uh, the apple computer and the ibm computer uh home computer to like a thing i hold in my hand that has more computing power than all the computers on the mission to the moon mm -hmm. you know <clears throat> yeah, yeah this, yeah, this, this phone i mean they could have gone you know, to the moon with an iphone yeah. <laughs> hey, so, this is a 30 gigabyte uh, SDHC chip. Yeah. Uh, th when IBM had their uh, computing systems, they were in floors and skyscrapers, and now 32 gigs oh, just yeah. in a little yeah. piece of thing like the, that. The amount of memory in this, in the original computers that they had, was uh, gigantic. Just gi I mean, mm. they were they would take up several yeah. floors of a building just to have this much yeah. computing power yeah and everybody yeah. takes this for granted now you know you get on the train now to subway here in new york and i counted the other day and i think i only counted out of like about 20 30 people on the train two people who weren't looking at a phone <laughs> mm -hmm. everybody's it's looking at a phone then you go out to dinner and everybody is eating dinner looking at their phone they're like addicted to these things me? I know that's why I like it because you know you and I and I guess a lot of the listeners too are radio people. You know we have the screens and we use them when we want. But 
you know, I've had my phone out since 2.30 in the afternoon. I could I probably, uh, maybe five minutes at the most, I had the screen on because I've been listening to things. I just look I at it because I, it, I think it's pretty. It, it, and as I said before, this is the new iPhone X. And when I turn it off, see, it's off now. And then I, it, oh, it's, it hasn't recognized me yet because I'm not looking at it. But now I'll look at it. And it recognizes me, and the lock unlocks, and then I'm able to, you know, it recognizes me, which is, as mm, I said, weird. more than my yeah. wife does. So, you know. <laughs> it, it's minority report, man. By the way, we've lost a lot of viewers tonight. What's happening? <laughs> this... Yeah, they don't know what they're missing. I mean, look at what we have to offer oh, them, this oh, and yeah. this. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> Maybe they call up to hear us argue. What? I don't know. Where are you, folks? Come on, come on back. What, what am I yelling? That they're not watching. They're not watching. Anyway, uh, yes, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, Tom. Well, if you want to change your tech talk, I've got some breaking news. Oh yeah. Our our interior secretary Ryan Zinke has determined that the real cause of the forest fires here in California. Wait a minute. Let me let me take a guess. It's not God. Uh, no. No. And yeah. is it? Is it? Well, you know, our our president said it was. Uh, uh, I think too much water or something. I can't remember what our president not said. He, huh? But not well, enough water. He, the, the water going into the Pacific. He, they, yeah. they weren't using it to put out the fires or something. Oh, like I that. see. Okay. Yeah. Well. Okay. Zeke says it's all the fault of environmental terrorists. Now, he is in charge of what again? Department of the Interior. Environmental, which means all the national forests. Environmental <laughs> terrorists. Well, uh, 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 yeah, they could. I mean, they could have started the fire. But, uh, you know, I don't know. You, could, I, you know, a terrorist, now you're giving, you know what he's doing? He's giving terrorists an idea. <laughs> Of something uh -oh. to do. Yeah, well, That's he idiotic. wasn't talking about arson. He was saying that, that creating laws that make it more difficult to clear brush is the problem. Uh, wait a minute. Are the laws against clearing brush? I thought there were laws no, saying no, you he, had to clear it. Out the well, no, I thought, I mean, even, I, even I, environmental I, policies, it, it hasn't any effect on us. It's what's, what it is. It's climate change. We're getting we're we're having droughts. We're having hotter summers, and uh, hotter all year Tell long. Tell me I mean, that this summer, you know, this summer is the hottest summer on record. You realize that? Mm -hmm. Yes. And oh, 127 yeah, no in Death Valley. What? 127 in Death Valley. Nice. Well, it's always 107 in Death Valley. No, but, 27. 127 in Death Valley. Well, it's 127 yeah. in Baghdad. Okay, so uh, you know. But what what I'm saying is is that the 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 the, uh, uh, the weather this year has been unrelentingly warm, you know. Oh yeah. Uh, and um, if anybody and and people go, oh well. It, what I love is during the winter when they go, well, it's cold. There's no global warming. You know, they don't understand. Global warming has nothing to do with things what? getting hotter or colder. It has to do with a general trend of the planet warming up and things changing. Yes, Keenan. Look at India. India's had record um, record heats this year too. You know. Yeah. Record breaking. Right, heat. It's, it's, yeah. it's the oceans. It's the oceans, and you know, and that's the other thing about these idiots that don't understand. The oceans are the terrorists. That's the problem. <laughs> terrorists. Yes. 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 No. What What I always say is. Um, um, you know, also, you have to understand this is a globe. This isn't the Northeast or the Northwest in the United States. This is a frigging globe. This isn't a little corner of the planet that has moving weather. This is a whole planet. This is all the ocean, but the planet's mostly ocean. These idiots just have their heads up there, rumps. What a bunch of dopes. You know, no. well, that, that, Amen, that, brother. that goes without saying, but that's what happens when you drain the swamp and supply your administration. Yeah, when you people. listen to friggin' Michael Savage and have your head up, you know, every sports game's ass. Yeah. 
I don't know what you just said, but I'll go along with it. Just for that. <laughs> well, that's all right. No, I, don't, I don't know what I said either. Right, right. right. Uh, your, your thinking got ahead of whatever your brain was. Yeah. So. I, uh, that happens yeah, to me. Got, yeah, my yeah. tongue got caught in my eye tooth. I couldn't see what I was saying. Ta da! Hey, 24. <laughs> we went up from uh, 21. Now it's 25. Hey, all right. Come on, people. Yeah. I don't you know. can do this. I don't know. You can, you can do it. You can do it. What, you know, if I just brought naked women on this program, I think it probably the numbers would just go, <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, the thing is, is that all it takes? Is that all it takes? You know. But uh, uh, but if I had naked women on, then YouTube wouldn't run it. So, you know, I mean, hell, you know, they would censor me. Well, you could have semi-naked women. Let they me ask that. you this now. Yeah. Twitter, who has not been censoring Alex Jones, has decided to censor Alex Jones. Now, hold on. Hold on. Mm -hmm. It's really stiff what they're doing to him. They're blocking him from Twitter. For a week, oh and they had I, they had the, oh they, had, they had the head of Twitter, and I don't know who this. They had the Jack head of Dorsey. Jack Dorsey. What a brain trust this moron is. Okay, uh, Jack Dorsey said, and I swear to you, we think it will send a message to him, and he will clean up his act. Wait a minute. Do, you know, do these you, nimrods you, have any idea how all of this has just blossomed uh, Jones's web presence well, begin, and his followers and yeah, to begin people with, are just he dying has, for he has, to get he more st of the He still has websites, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. He still has, I think, an app at Apple. <laughs> okay, even though he took them off <laughs> iTunes, yeah. there's an app. Yeah. In fact, let me look. I'll, I'll look and see if there's an app for Alex Jones. I, I oh, bet, the, I bet you dollars I bet. to donuts there is. You know, let me see uh, here. Apple, Apple has an app. What do you mean Apple has an app? I'm just being silly oh. because it's app. app oh, app. I, I see. Uh, yeah, real funny. Uh, oh, wait a uh, <laughs> Ray, Ray, Renati, Ray Renati is calling. Here we go. Hey Ray, how you doing this evening? Let me see. Here. Hello, Alex. Alex Jones. Oh God. There we go. There's Al Alex Jones Radio. Is it an app? <laughs> yes. Alex Jones Radio. Well, Infowars Radio costs ninety nine cents, and you can get it on Apple, who has banned him from iTunes. Now, does that Yay. make any fucking sense at all? They ban him from well, iTunes, but you can buy his app on Apple. Oh, God. Uh, Apple? Don't get it. And yeah. I heard that sales like, went up like crazy. I'm sure yeah. it did. I'm sure it's not it, even. It, it's like Trump's trade war. Oh, wait a minute. Know, it, like no, he, wait a minute. He put minute. all these sanctions on the Germans, and they came to him and that's a, said, hey, we'll buy all kinds that's of shit. That's a phony from you info war, war, wars. Well, yeah. Hold on a second. Let me. Let me just show people here uh, my uh, my iPhone here. Uh, let me see here. Uh, if you can see, but here is InfoWars official, and you can see it's got the logo and everything. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And and you can buy it up there. Okay. You can buy it uh, on 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 Apple. So so they're charging for it now. I got it for no, free. No the other no no. This I deleted no, it. No, this is free. This one was free. Oh, okay. There was one there for InfoWars. It was ninety-nine cents. Probably somebody oh. trying to make money off of it. Okay. Oh yeah. But that that was the uh, that was what was what was going on with them. I mean, it's amazing. It's just amazing the the hypocrisy of it all. I mean, it the idiocy of Apple saying, "Well, we're going to show him. We're not going to run Alex Jones on on iTunes," and then they're selling his app. <laughs> How stupid! Well, hey, he's, he's making a fortune, huh? He's making well, a fortune you know, on his app, and so the, they are too. They get a, a royalty or something, right? right. No, you know these, yeah. these, com these companies, they they have no scruples. I mean, this is what I tried to tell this <laughs> idiot uh, uh, that I used to know, who was tried to be so far to the left, he had no idea what the left was. He would, he would. Nothing would satisfy him. Everything had to be better, and that's good, but he's never satisfied. Anyhow, he's, uh, I used to tell him, I said, you don't understand. This is, everything is a business, you know. 
you, you think about these companies and you want to ban them because they do this and they do that. All they want to do is make money. They don't sell you anything. They don't care what you say. Well, the point, the, point is, the, not the, the point is that it's rather silly. Number one, it was really it silly of Dorsey to say, well, you know, we're taking him off for a week. And that'll maybe make <laughs> him clean up his act. What? Yeah, right. He doesn't give a uh, shit. He's still selling his fuck no. and selling his. No, he's not selling his app. Giving his app away, and then you watch it, and he's got commercials for like, you know, male enhancement. I think is the stuff is a major sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> oh hey, God! Carl, Karl Marx said, "When it comes time for a capitalist to commit suicide, another capitalist will sell him the rope." Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Carl Marx. Wait a minute, Let, Ray. Did, did you did you talk about what Trump did today? Fire uh, taking away the security clearance of uh, 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 Brennan. The, the, this, yeah, Brennan. Did you yeah. talk about that? Uh, I was. I had no. it. I have it here. I mean, that just blows my mind. John M Brennan, uh, who hey, is yeah, uh, okay, Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hey, uh, excuse me, John. I'm trying to talk to Ray. Um, uh, John Brennan, in case people didn't hear, had who was the head of the used to be the head of the CIA, isn't any longer. I think he was under Obama. Um, got his security clearance. Uh, Unbelievable. Killed. Uh, because he said Trump was a traitor. And so yeah. Trump said, we've, we, well, uh, uh, what's her name? Sarah Huckabee, fat fuck. Sanders. Uh, said uh, that... Uh, uh, it was done because he was acting in an irrational manner. Yeah, and he was telling lies. Yeah, yeah and he was telling lies, like that he's a traitor. <laughs> Who's that remind you of? <laughs> and, and there's a list of like 10 other people. Hey, that he's probably you ask me, who, do, who does it remind me of? They're all Democrats. You're saying, who does it remind me of? doesn't remind me of Hitler. I knew Hitler, and he's no Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, who, who said that? It was The guy... Uh, uh, Oh, what's his oh, name? Oh, the senator from Texas. Oh, no, that was... Yeah, that yeah, was... That's it, like, it, yeah, it was running yeah, uh, he, for vice president. Oh, who was the guy? What's his name? Come uh, on, guys. Uh, can't, no! I can't remember what it was. Quail. Oh, it was uh, Dan Quail. You're, uh, yeah. Uh, I knew... I knew... Ken, I, knew I knew Jack you. Kennedy. Yeah. yeah. You're no Jack Kennedy. And you're no Jack yeah. Kennedy. Oh, damn. The senator was from Texas, right? Oh, boy, Ben... Yeah. Lloyd Benson. Benson. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Right. Lloyd, Lloyd Benson. Benson. Oh, that's but, wait a minute. Idea. I'm going to yeah. give it to Scott anyway because he was trying to yell it out and everybody was jumping in, but he had it. Yeah, Scott had it. Yeah, it oh, right. Once you said Texas, then it dawned on me. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah. Yeah, right. I yeah. picture him, but yeah. And, and when he said that, all America cheered. You could just hear yeah. a collective cheer go out. You know. <laughs> and with the timing was so perfect. It was just yeah. perfect. It but, was, yep. No, wait a minute. Yep. Who was who was who was he? Who was his running mate? Who was running for president at the time? George H. W. Bush. Mondale, or no, 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 no. On the no, Democratic no. side. Bob, Bob, Bob Dole. Bob. No, it had to be. A, he was a Democrat. Yeah, he was Benson. a Democrat. So it was either Mondale or Dole. Uh, Mondale or. It was Dukakis. 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 That's right. Dukakis. Well, you know, what? when you think about it, you just mentioned Mondale. You mentioned Dukakis. These are people who have just become an absolute footnote in history. Yeah. You know? Um, uh, 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 do you even remember Dukakis, uh, Keenan? Yeah, I do. Really? Of course the guy with the bushy the eyebrows. Me. The guy with the bushy eyebrows. <laughs> there, was, there was no hope. He might that. look like he's 25, but we remember Dukakis. And his sister was the actress, uh, Olivia Dukakis. Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah. yeah. Olivia. They weren't related. And, and I talked. Yes, they were. It was his sister. They were. It was his sister. No. But I found no. out something about Olivia Dukakis, and I hope she's not. I think she's still alive. But go ahead, sue me. I talked to an actor <laughs> who worked with her, and I said, "So how is she to work with?" He says, "There's only one thing I remember about Olivia Dukakis: her farting." No. <laughs> no. He said, oh, "We'd be God. doing. We'd be doing a scene, and she'd fart." <laughs> and we try to do the job without gagging. <laughs> yeah, so all I can, whenever I go to see a movie and Olivia Dukakis is in it, I think of her oh. farting while she's doing the scene. Olympia. Olympia. Olympia, Olympia. Olympia Dukakis. Yeah, 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 I couldn't find, I got Olivia 
Olivia, and, and, Olympia, right? You got right, right. Olivia Newton, hey, John. Jo- but... Joan, jo- Joan Rivers. I remember a, a, a thing, a comedy sketch she was doing about Dukakis, and she says, "I don't trust any man that has mustaches above his eyes." <laughs> <laughs> Those were cool, man. Remember when he was in the but, tank? But what, when he was what, in the but, tank. But, but my, my question is, what possessed the Democrats? If you want to talk about the Democrats as losers, what possessed <laughs> them to nominate right. Dukakis? Yeah. It, it made no sense whatsoever. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you just one look at this guy and you go, we can't run this guy for president. And he looks too goofy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, the there's Russians something, rigged. something well, about, one. yeah, something about Massachusetts governors be becoming president. I mean, Calvin Coolidge was a governor of Massachusetts. Uh, Mitt Romney almost became a, a, a governor. John Kennedy. Oh no, Kennedy was a senator. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and Ke- yeah. So you know, but uh, all I'm saying is, is that that uh, you know, uh, he's the cousin. Uh, Michael Dukakis was the cousin of Olympia. Dukakis. Oh, really? Not the brother. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you guys are armed with Wikipedia, and I can't get back here to get to it. I'm not trying to tell you you're wrong. I'm getting, a, I'm getting, I'm getting a second screen here somewhere where I can outdo you <clears throat> by going to, you know. Because I mean, if I have to do it, I have to go back this. here to go look at it. You know. <laughs> well, we're your hey, that would be a great show. You know, just guys arguing fake news with different screens like this, and each looking at a different source. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, to validate whatever viewpoint. Well, you need there. Phil here for that. I mean, Phil. Will <laughs> Today, there's an organization. I got an award from them, by the way, called the RTNDA, the Radio and Television News Directors Association, or whatever. I, I should know the name of it because they gave me an award that I have somewhere, uh, which is actually more prestigious, believe it or not, than an Emmy because it's a news, really prestigious news organization. And they today have said that they are thinking of uh, getting together and filing all kinds of things about the president calling the news fake news. That they think that he's 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 sullying the industry, and that they object to that, and they want the world to know it. Yeah, uh, Tom. More more objectionable. He's calling it, calling the news profession the enemies of the people. Yeah. You know, and that's probably what they're really so. Didn't about. Hitler he, say something like that about the news the in his day? All down through history have said the same thing. Yeah. The, the the journalists are enemies of the people. Well, that's right. You know, yeah, Ray. So, enemy of the people is a phrase, a phrase like like Tom said, that's been around for centuries, literally. And then Ibsen used it as a title of a play, the right. enemy of the people. Right. It's about in a, a guy. It's, way. A, it's about a guy who uh, who, who was trying to tell the, the truth. Well, he was trying to tell the truth at the baths. Uh, yes, and which no one would were, listen to him polluted. because they were afraid it would yeah. screw up the economy. Yeah. And he ended up losing, and so it's so ironic to me. That he's using this phrase in the way that he is, given the Ibsen, yeah, play. I mean, it's 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 like it's like that play all over again, and then he's using the title. It just blows my mind. Yeah, uh, uh, amazing uh, what he's doing. But anyway, the RNTDA is is thinking of uh, of uh, or it's RNDTDA. Let me see here. Let me see if I can find. Maybe I can even find the story. Uh, RT. N D A R T N D A N A Merle Awards Ethics uh, Yeah uh, uh, Here we go um, Here they are And then let's look at news Yes Okay um, I'm I'm not looking at you folks Because I'm having to read back here It's the only way I can do it That's why they have an advantage over me If anybody can find this article right now They can read it instead of me Uh, Broadcast journalists are joining newspaper editors in a planned August 16th pushback on President Donald Trump's attacks on mainstream media as fake news. The Boston Globe is leading more than 100 local newspapers in the effort, which the Radio Television Digital News Association said Monday it was joining. 
We urge our members to join the effort on Thursday, August 16th by dedicating airtime, publishing an online editorial, or sharing information via social media platform that speaks to your viewers and listeners about the role we play in preserving the public's right and need to know. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, they're, finding, they're pushing back on this, but they're not pushing back in the way I've suggested, and that is to just threaten to stop reporting every stupid little thing that Numbnuts does. God, that would be great if they all got together and yeah. did that. It, and if that the press stayed creative. out of the White House. Yeah. Oh, I, I just get too re creative. I really bothered that, there's, that the news people, here's a guy who is literally uh, sullying you, calling you fake news, calling you the enemy of the people, and then every day you give him all the publicity he wants. Every time he farts, you know, you say well, he we farted. We were just talking about that because it's about money. Yeah. They'll, uh, we were saying how uh, Jack Dorsey is kind of a pimp, you know, just says he's going to slap Alex Jones for uh, 10 days or something. Well, no, but, but this but, is no, the same his, thing. His line was, and maybe that'll get a message to Alex Jones and he'll change his ways. What? Are you out of yeah. your fucking mind? He yeah, it's, they're going to keep reporting on Trump because Trump makes money for them. Facebook isn't put, isn't put, yeah, doesn't have pages on him. Uh, 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 tr uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, what we're on? Uh, 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 YouTube won't uh, broadcast him. Uh, a lot of organizations are not running him any longer. D and he's still saying the same shit he was saying. Do you really think a week on waivers, putting him in the penalty box, sending him to his room, is going to change the way he does business? Yes, pa uh, yes, Patrick. Tom. <laughs> Well, just getting back to Trump, uh, you know, the very least that they should do is stop covering these 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 political rallies he's doing. Right. I mean, they're 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 giving him wall to wall coverage on this, and I agree. More and more people are saying, "Hey, stop covering these rallies because he's actually this is where these venues are. He's actually using to attack the press that are they're covering it. Well, so it's it, it's just. It's yeah. totally ridiculous. It's it's a yeah. co it's a codependent relationship. Yes, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. and and it it's uh, um, it's sick. Okay. Anyway, what, uh, it really is. It's just disgusting. I can't even believe this has happened to our country. Yeah. It's worse than Watergate to me. Mm -hmm. It's it's. Um, Oh, it's I can't a moral, intellectual decline, the likes of which this country has never seen before. Right. I, I, it's just yeah. incredible. I, I never I, thought that I, this would happen. I just don't understand how, in my lifetime. how people can, uh, his base can still think he's wonderful after all the things they hear that he does. Yeah, but have, you know. what, what would Phil say? Phil would say, but I like all the good things he's doing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was supposed to be conservative tonight. Oh, yeah. Let's see. <laughs> uh, hey, okay, guys. Uh, I just found this. Here on my Facebook page is a post uh, post from Blue Dem Warriors. It's this beautiful lady standing next to her car. And on the car is a big picture of Jesus with thorns. And it says, Trump, the man who left his great life to be defamed, mocked, ridiculed, and humiliated to serve and protect America. Donald is mine, chosen divine. Stand with him before man, and I will stand with you before my Father in heaven. It's right on. I got California plates. Oh no! <laughs> what kind of Facebook friends do you have, for Christ's sake? No, it didn't come from her. It's uh, came from one of my progressive friends. Oh, I finding see. this somewhere, you know, and saying, "Hey, get a load of this, dude." But I mean, you know, I mean, come on. You know, I think <laughs> yeah, uh, 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 my friend Penn Gillette went to a, a, the Vulture or someplace like that and said he knows the tapes exist of Trump saying the word, the N-word, which we all know what the N-word means, so I don't know why we keep saying N. I know. Um, uh, uh, he, he said that he, when he was doing The Apprentice, heard him say it to a point where it made him personally feel uncomfortable. Wow, wow, yeah. All right? Wow. So, yeah, yes, Keenan. 
there was an article here in the CNN website today with Penn Jillette um, being quoted or being interviewed. <clears throat> yeah. I, I read today. So. Yeah, it probably is. Wow, yeah. Penn Jillette has more credibility than Trump. This could be the un- beginning of the undoing of Trump. I have more credibility. But see, the thing is, I mean, this is all a diversion because you're never going to convict Trump on anything for saying the N-word. It's not illegal. I mean, they, they're not going to care. He was a pussy grabber. He said all these other things they know that he said, and they don't care about that. I mean, this is a waste I still want to know how you grab a pussy. Well, it has to you be a big grow pussy. Well, that, that's because you're blind and you can't see it. So, so I could, yeah. hey, I could feel it, baby, if I wanted. <laughs> well, okay, now. <laughs> well, then you know how you grab a pussy. There are some that you can grab. Well, yeah, I guess you. I mean, you could grab the hair. I guess you could grab the snatch. I mean, you know. <laughs> or yeah, it's like not, large not, labia majora. Y- yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, but. I just, say, I just tell it like it is. Yeah, Labia Majora, by the way, is not a, it, is not a constellation, in case people are wondering. <laughs> hey, you know, it's just part of the no, human body. No, I, I mean, uh, I, that, that, well, we all thought that that alone would get him, he wouldn't possibly win an election because of that. Yeah. And, and, you know, we heard him say it, or we kind of heard him say it, because they kept bleeping out the word pussy. Uh, I, I mean, I wish they had left it the way it was, because then everybody would have heard it for how egregious it was. And even if you say, oh, well, that was a couple of years ago, and that's the way guys joked with each other. I'm sorry, I never joked that way with other guys. And if they started joking that way, I'd call them on it. Yep. You know, what kind of an asshole is Trump? He's a fucking hillbilly. You know? Yeah. But that's what that's exactly why even if we hear these tapes, nothing's going to come of it. Well, you know, he is absolutely right. He could shoot somebody on 5th Avenue and nobody would even come after him. Everybody would be defending him. The guy probably asked for it. You know. Yeah. Well, it's funny because you know, a lot of New Yorkers are the ones who really don't like him, I think, more. You know, because they're used to him. They know that he's a, just full of shit. Oh, we're happy that he got elected president because that's how we got him out of New York. <laughs> well, that's a good point, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, he's very, um, always was very unpopular in New York. New Yorkers, you know, New Yorkers looked upon Donald Trump as a. Uh, uh, now I won't say carpet salesman because that would be besmirching Phil. Uh, yeah, they, they kind of looked upon him as a uh, as a you know a carnival barker. You know that he uh, he yeah. never, he never really had any great business sense. He simply presented himself as a businessman, as a guy who knew, and then that was his uh, that was his uh, his cakes and cookies that he was selling. You know, was oh buy my book. You know, I'm a rich guy. Buy my ties because I know how to have rich ties. You know, buy my steaks. This is what I eat because I'm rich. You know, and and then he would sell his name to put on the front of buildings he didn't even build. That's so, right. So yeah. it really it was all branding on his part. And, uh, okay, that's fine. I understand it. But uh, nobody ever took him seriously as a businessman. No, no, he's not. I mean, like, God, the, the guy is sick. He's so, he's so ignorant. The guy is such a fool. I can't believe it. Well, it's, that's easy to say. Uh, he's a gangster. Huh? Yeah. yeah. He's a gangster. Yeah. A wannabe. A wannabe. A wannabe yeah. Yeah, he, he cavorts with gangsters. Well, he, and look, he does you know, gangsterish I'm gonna, things. I'm going to defend him, okay, because I live in New York, and I know how business is done in New York. And that if you're a builder and you want to get a building built and you want the, you know, the, tr- the trades to come in and build your building like the steel workers and so on, you got to have the mob on your side. you got to deal with the mob in order to get that building built. Cause nothing, well, I know. You know so you, so yeah. that's who he did business with. And because he but did you, business with them, that's the way he winds up doing business. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's the only way he knows how to do it. Hey, in the Catholic Church, too. My uh, uncle uh, was a priest in Chicago, 
And one of the regular guests that used to take all the priests out for dinner and treat them and, and donate lots of money was Carlo Gambino. Of course. There you yeah. Go. Of oh, course. Yeah. But you yeah. got to remember, the mob were Catholic. <clears throat> and so, therefore, when it came to, you know, to the, to the church... This was a very holy thing to them. They were all very oh, yeah. they were all yeah. very religious. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. They, <laughs> I, I don't know. They never learned they never learned thou shalt not kill, but you know, I mean <laughs> Yeah, I just got a little problem with that one. <laughs> well, whatever is left of them, they still are. Uh, it, yeah, very yeah. very funny. I'm trying to remember, I can't remember the name of the guy, but I had was at a party at Al Goldstein's house years ago. And his distributors were the mob. They had to be <laughs> it, 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 the only way a magazine or newspaper went on the streets in New York City was if the mob transported. In fact, I remember reading uh, an article in the New York Times that said, Al Goldstein, publisher of Screw Magazine, distributes his paper through the mob. <laughs> and I'm thinking about it and going, well, so does the New York Times. You know? <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> but his one of his guys who was a distributor, and I can't remember his name now because he became very famous because he eventually got killed. Uh, <laughs> and he had one of those he had one of those middle names like the animal, the whatever, the this, the that. I wish I could remember his name. Jesus, it was a great name too. You would all know it too. But anyway, he oh. was there, and he lived out in Long Island. Oh, and. and um. he, yeah. And he's sitting there griping at the party to us. You know, the district attorney out in Long Island told me he wants me to move off the island. He doesn't you want me there. You're huh? talking about Sammy the Bull Gravano? No, it wasn't Sammy the Bull Gravano. Oh, no. Oh, I, okay. I wish it was. It would be even a better story. Uh, yeah. But he, the, imagine that. The district attorney's asking me to move. Me! <laughs> You know, and I'm going, geez almighty, I don't want to be the district attorney. You know, my life ain't worth shit about now. But in New York, you got used to, you know, I, I knew that the mob, like Al at one point said, I want to start distributing my own magazine, which was Screw Magazine. And they said, well, go ahead and do it. Uh, you can put them on the trucks, but they're never getting off. You know. And he realized so that he had to keep doing business with the mob in order to get his magazine distributed. Otherwise, he wouldn't get on the newsstands. And, and that, so I understand that Trump, in being a building homes and building houses, had to somehow deal with the mob. That's why Roy Cohn was his lawyer, because Roy Cohn was the mob's lawyer. And, and also yeah. the scariest man I ever met. Okay. You met Roy Cohn? Oh, yeah. I was Did you ever see Angels in America? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. I, I, cheered I just he, saw it here in Berkeley I, I, Rep. I cheered when he died. Uh, yeah. uh, Roy Cohn, I'm telling you this now, and you've heard this story, I'm sure, Tom, because I've told it on several occasions. Sure, I've heard I forgot. it. Uh, he, <laughs> about yeah, we all time. heard it. Uh, I, I'm saying this for Ray. Ray's, Ray hasn't I think heard I heard, it. I think I heard it, but I just forgot. So please tell me again. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> no, it, was a, it was a guy named Barry Farber had a radio show. What was that? I bet it was Steve making that noise. No, that wasn't me. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm home. I'm, it's quiet. Well, it might have been not Olympia Dukakis farting. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> uh, no, quickly. I mean, I, I was doing this show with uh, Barry Farber. He invited me over to his show. Uh, to debate his guest. And I went in, and who's looking at me straight in the face but Roy Cohn? And we started arguing back and forth about stuff. And at one point, I said to him, how do you feel about the fact that you're responsible for the death of the Rosenbergs? The Rosenbergs were a very famous case of people who were the only people, I think, executed in the United States for for uh, for uh, espionage, espionage treason. Uh, for treason and espionage, uh, yeah. and and he was leading the prosecution. And uh, I said, "How do you feel about the fact that you killed the Rosenbergs?" And, I, and this resonated with me because it happened years and years and years earlier. But I remember when I was growing up, the 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 slogan "Save the Rosenbergs." It was like stenciled on every stenciled on 
bus stops in Marin County, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and I looked at him. I said, how do you feel about the fact that you killed the Rosenbergs? And he said, I feel very good. And when he said that, he looked me straight in the face and said it with these and people have described them the same way I did, shark eyes. Yeah, wow. Right? Wow. And when he said that, at that precise moment, I realized that I've come as close in my lifetime as I possibly could to looking at the devil. Yeah. yeah. You know, it was just, it was scary. Yeah. And wow. Roy Cohn was a very scary, scary man. And he was the idol of Donald Trump. And oh Donald God. Trump taught him all about how to handle business and how to handle things. And it, it, that's why if you think your country's being run like a mobster's running it, a mobster is running it. He, he it, is running it like Roy Cohn would have, that's for sure. It, Although Roy Cohn <laughs> was a lot smarter. Uh, oh, yeah. But, Way smarter. But, and if nobody's ever seen Roy Cohn, go back and look at videos of the McCarthy hearings. And the guy sitting to the left of him is Roy Cohn. By the well, way, the, by, the way, by, the, by Cohn. the way, the guy sitting to the right of him, also working for McCarthy, was a guy by the name of Robert Kennedy. I just thought I'd mention that. Yeah. That's why I never trusted Robert Kennedy. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Well, you see, I grew yeah. up in that in that whole era of the of the witch hunts, uh, mm. and and uh, uh, it had a large impact on me and on my politics. Mm-hmm. Um, what What did you think of Woody Allen's The Front? Remember that 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 film was about. Well, black I mean, I, you know that 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 movie is about what I, is something that truthfully and actually happened that. That yeah. people who were writers who had been canned, who had been who had made it into there was this this book in New York City that came out every week called Red Channels, and Red Channels listed people who were suspected of being communists. And if somehow your name got into it, you suddenly didn't have a job anymore. Now, mm. who put out Red Channels? It was a guy who owned a line of grocery stores who decided he was going to publish this magazine because he was like the most powerful advertiser on the East Coast, people would listen to him. If he said that uh, and there were a lot of big names and people like Zero Mostel made it. And uh, a lot of the people who were in that movie were blacklisted. Um, uh, if you made it to Red Channels, you just didn't work. Uh, and there was a guy by the name of Louis Neiser. He was a lawyer. And there was this uh, guy, and his name was, I'm trying to remember his name now, John Henry Falk. And he, he suddenly showed up in Red Channels. And he was, Arthur Godfrey was the biggest thing in radio in those days. He was considered the successor to Arthur Godfrey. He was that good, that big, that important. And as soon as John Henry Falk made Red Channels, he was blacklisted wound up having to move back to Texas and work in some Texas radio station. Louis Neiser at the time sued the guy who ran Red Channels, who ran these grocery stores, sued him for like $3 million, which at the time when it was finally, he was found guilty, was the largest legal settlement in American jurisprudence. Now you think about $3 million today and you go, come on, that guy's suing for billions. Back then, three million was a lot of money, and it put the guy out of business. So that movie resounded with me because I knew about Red Channels, and I knew about that whole period of of people who whose whole careers were ditched just simply on the inference, you know. Mm. Uh, and uh, you know, Zero Mostel is a line in the picture. Jesus Christ, I didn't know she was a communist. I just wanted to get laid, <laughs> you know. And that, that's really the truth. That's what happened back in the day. And, uh, and um, um, you know, there were uh, there were other people like uh, the writer. Um, uh, uh, oh, what's his name? The screenwriter. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm blanking on it, too. Who, who, not, I, not... who I interviewed uh, years ago. Uh, he wrote You're Spartacus. You're not talking about Arthur Miller, are no, you? I'm no, I'm talking about he wrote Spartacus. He wrote the screenplay for Spartacus. 
Oh. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, right. Uh, hold on a second. I'll get the name. Spartacus. Spartacus. It, uh, he, he uh, oh, come on. I type something, go in there. Spartacus. Okay. Um, Had a uh, catchy it, name. It, 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 it starts with a T. Let me see here. Spartacus T. Uh, name uh, is uh, Dalton Trumbo. Dalton Trumbo, yeah, right. Dalton Trumbo. Yeah. And I interviewed him years ago, and uh, uh, he was kind of a hero of mine. You know, I mean, he, mm. he survived mm -hmm. it by writing. He wrote a screenplay for a movie called The Little One or The Little Littlest uh, Something or Another. And it won the Academy Award for Best Screenplay. And because he did it uh, under a false name, he never, nobody ever picked up that Academy Award and still hasn't uh, to this day. Yeah, interesting. I think yeah. the Academy has since sent it to his relatives. Um, but, the, you know, the, the, the people's lives were completely ruined by blacklists. And There's a... There's a huge list on Wikipedia of all the people on Red, just in Red Channel. It's huge. Okay, give a couple of names. Names we know. Well, I'm Arthur Miller, of course. Lee J. Lee J. Cobb. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the Stella Adler, Uta Hagen. Uta Hagen. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Howard Koch, mm -hmm. screenwriter. Mm -hmm. uh, G Gypsy Rose Lee. I'm just trying to find people you'd know here. Uh, Burgess Meredith, Arthur yeah. Miller, uh, Orson Welles. Wow. Uh, Paul Stewart, Pete Seeger, the folk singer. Well, of course, oh, yeah. he would be. <laughs> he probably be yeah. the top of the list. Of course, he's on there. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can go on and on. There's all a bunch of people you know on here. Orson Bean. Remember Orson Bean? Orson Bean. Oh, yeah. Bean. Yeah, he was on yeah. the Hollywood well, I'll, Squares. I'll tell you why yeah. Orson <clears throat> Bean. Yep, yep. I'll tell you why Orson <clears throat> Bean made the list. Is because at my union SAG, or not SAG, not SAG. After uh, they had a uh, a slate of people running for the union. Uh, there was the pro Red Channels group, who was represented by. Are you ready? Bud Collier, who was the voice of Superman hmm. on radio, and. Orson Bean, who was anti-Red Channels, and he won and became the president of the union. Hmm. And that's why he's on that list. Ah. <laughs> you know. Uh, um, I don't know how, why Orson Welles made it, but, you know. Uh, well, he was pretty outspoken, I think. Yeah. As far as I remember. But I always tell the story about the time I went into a, a, a meeting. At 15, I went into a... Uh, hearing of the Un-American Activities Subcommittee uh, hearings in San Francisco. My father was outside protesting, so I just walked in as a kid and walked into the into the room, and I saw them completely destroy the career of a morning talk show host. Uh, a guy <clears throat> I used to listen to every morning and loved his show. It was called San Francisco Story, and he, he just used to tell stories every morning about the history of San Francisco. There were no politics involved in it or anything. And they simply said, are you now, have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? And he took the fifth, and that was the last day he worked at that radio station. Wow. 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 And I saw his career ruined, and from that moment on, I realized I never wanted to ever see this happen again in America. Mm. So whenever I see anything that reminds me of it, you know, and, and sometimes the Me Too movement reminds me of it, uh, where yeah. people are being accused of something without benefit of any kind of trial or uh, even specifications made, it, it you know I, I I tend to get a bit squeamish about it. So excuse. and they've been blacklisted. Yeah. They, yeah. It's well, already happened. Well, I mean, let's be honest about it. And I, I know people are going to find this hard for me, to, you know, when I say it. But a guy like Kevin Spacey is he? literally guilty of something or is he being blacklisted oh well, he's probably never, being blacklisted i would think yeah we'll never you know? know at this point because there's there's no due process well it's that's just, what i'm saying yeah. there was no due yeah. pro, there was yeah. no due process where the the uh, communist hearings were concerned as well and yet people lost their jobs and didn't work for years 
And maybe Charlie Chaplin too was on the list. I went to. I was in San Francisco. I was a kid. My father. I was old enough to go into a place that served alcohol. I went with my father to the Hungry Eye, which was a nightclub in San Francisco, uh, yeah. to see Irwin Corey. I remember it. And my father said, see that spotlight? I said, yeah. He says, you know who's running it? And I said, no. And I think the name he said was Alfred Bieberman. He said he was one of the unfriendly ten. Now he's running <laughs> a spotlight at the hungry eye. Mm. Oh. You know. My father was a real lefty, so he would always bring that kind of crap. I was a red diaper baby if there ever was one, you know. Um, but, and I asked my father once, I said, were you ever a communist? He said, no. And I said, why not? You, you know, you, politically, you're really to the left. And he said, because I realized that communi- when I, people wanted me to join the Communist Party and be part of co- the Communist Party, that the only people that the Communist Party was going to help was Russia. It wasn't going to help America. And so I didn't, you know, if, it was, if, if somehow it was going to help America, then maybe I would have joined it. But it wasn't going to help America, so I never joined it. But it was kind of the elitist thing back in the 30s to be a member of the Communist Party. And then come the 50s, everybody's going, have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? Well, huh. yeah, back when I wanted to get laid, you know. Uh, <laughs> so so it, it's really, um, it's one of the uglier points in our history. So when the front came out, uh, I just, I, was, I, I knew what it was about. It was amazing. It was and, a great film, yeah. You know, the front. Uh, I wish they'd make more films like that. They don't, uh, you know, Denny Lehane, who wrote uh, Mystic River, got a great book uh, mm-hmm. called The Given it's Day. Wonderful, wonderful. You make that movie. You yeah. go ahead. You make the movie. Yeah. Meanwhile, the people who want to make money are going to make another Defenders movie. Yeah, you right. Know? You're right. I mean, You're right. they're going to make, yeah. you know, uh, m- movies in theaters now are not movies. You know, they're amusement park rides. And, yeah. and and oh, that's okay. a good point. That's so if really that's what movies point. have become, yeah. that's what movies have become. This kind of stuff belongs on net. Thank God there's Netflix and there's HBO and there are places where they can tell these stories. Yeah, right. You're and, right. You know. But don't ask a movie company to pay for that. They won't do that. No. They you know they want to know how many asses they're going to put, how many seats they're going to put, asses they're going to put in seats. I don't even know how some of these movies. My wife wants to go see the Black Klansman. And I want, why? It's going to be on HBO in three months or Netflix or someplace like that. Why do we have to see it now? And I can't imagine that if you walked into the theater, it was going to be packed with people. Yeah, yeah. You know, because, Weird. because you know, if you got special effects in 3D, did he do it in 3D? I don't think so. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, there's a reason to go to a theater, and there's a re- and that's for a big budget kind of like blowout special effects 3D film. But for the smaller yeah. films, wait three months, sit home, you're at home, you can t- watch them on your screen at home, they're gonna look great, you know? Yeah. And, and in fact, I wait for the big ones too now because it looks great on my 4K, which is exactly the resolution they project at the theaters now. So it's just a big 4K TV set you're watching. One thing I like about the theaters is the sound still, I just, if they do it right. Yeah, but I got, I, I, I got yeah. great sound in my place, too. Oh, I don't. <laughs> I, I got the surround sound, the whole thing. Yeah. No, I don't miss a bed. I don't want to have... Listen, I don't want to have to leave the house if I don't have to, okay? Yeah. Boy, thank you, everybody. I have gotten to some areas tonight that we don't normally get into and allowed me to tell some stories for the 84th time so that's good too (laughs) Um, it it used to be when I had you know tens of thousands of people listening to me every morning I could tell the same story over and over again and people would not hear the same story all at once right and you did but now with the same 20 people I I had everybody hear the stories over and over again anyway thank you very much John Perulis for joining us this evening thank you Uh, you oh cool thank you thanks Steve Keenan always nice to have you here good to have a new face on the program yeah and uh, Scott always nice to have an old face on the program 
Uh, I always feel good when you're there. I don't know why. Uh, Tommy Miguchi, I definitely feel good when I see your face on the program. And Ray, you're, you're a gem. Okay. Uh, th <laughs> oh, thank you all. Why don't you um, give the audience a big wave goodbye so they can uh, they can see your shiny little faces. Shiny little faces. Bye bye, everybody. Okay, there they are. That's our uh, citizens panel for tonight. Uh, they uh, they were a good citizen panel. Good citizen panel. Uh, and uh, we'll be back again. You know, next time. In the meantime, I I, I do want to say to you that the uh, intersection is next, and that's followed at 1 o'clock in the morning by uh, uh, Connections. Then tomorrow night at 9.30, it's Damian Chaplin, and he does a show called The Exchange. And once again, at 10 o'clock, I'll be back here. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, be sure to tell her I love her. Bye-bye. <laughs>